What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, City. What's up, Cover 32 crew? It's your boy, Jay Green. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Drew, and you're now tuned in to Cover 32. Cover 32, welcome back. I'm Jordan, and you are now watching the Intro to Sport Cards, Part 2. So in the previous episode, my boy Drew took care of you guys, showed you a little bit of why cards uh, have become a little bit more popular again, why the hobby has come back. Um, today, I want to show you what it is that you are even looking for. So for any of you that are interested in getting into the hobby, the, most people are getting involved for two reasons, either to make money or you want to collect. So today I want to show you the variations, all the different types of cards that you can be getting into. So that way, depending on what your budget is like, you can spend your money wisely. Um, so let's just hop straight into it. So what makes a card valuable? Um, so the, for the most part, we always are looking for rookie cards. Uh, we want rookie cards. We want them, um, their base. We want their variations. So what's a variation? Um, Let's see if I have an example. All right, so this is basketball, but this is what we would call a base card. So this is the NBA debut Cameron Johnson base rookie card, right? Now what we call a variation would be something like this. Nick Bosa optic rookie card. See how it has a little shine to it? You have hundreds of thousands of different types of variations and they all have different um, values. So you got different brands. They all fall underneath, the majority of fall underneath the same company, Panini. Uh, Panini makes pretty much all sport cards that are worth anything these days. Um, and, but underneath Panini you have all the different brands. So like I said before, this is Panini Donruss Optic. You can see the little logo up top. These are, this is your optic. The Cameron Johnson that I showed before, this little symbol, this is your mosaic. So you got so many different ones. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Mosaic, this is what I, so I started collecting last year and Mosaic was the first brand that kind of popped off the page to me. I personally like the style of the card. I like how there's no background. It's just the player with, um, you know, there's no sport background, uh, no arena background, I mean. Um, so you got some cards, Let's see if I can find one. All right, so you also got another Nick Bosa. The back of this Nick Bosa, you can see there's a field that's kind of what I mean by um, there's a arena background. Um, so I personally, I started all and I liked Mosaic the most. Um, I got, as time went on, my taste kind of changed um, and I started liking um, some of the other cards, some of the other brands a little bit better, but Mosaic is about a mid-range tier, um, a mid-range box. So you can get Mosaic, I mean, prices have skyrocketed now, um, but you can get Mosaic, let's say a blaster. Um, you can get a Mosaic blaster for probably like 60 bucks resale. Retail, um, it would be a bit cheaper. Um, so, okay, you're probably also asking what the heck is a blaster? So you also have, when it comes to, you have different brands and then you also have different boxes. So this box here, this is considered a mega. So a mega box, this one here, uh, Panini Prisms mega box came with four cards per pack, 10 packs per box. I think it goes without saying, the more you spend on the box, the more chances you have of finding something valuable in it. So you have this, which is the mega, which is kind of the mid-tier. Um, you can get, auto, it's, you're guaranteed one autograph out of it. You get a, a higher range of 
more valuable variations of rookie cards in it, so your chances to hit are higher if you were to purchase a Mega Box. So you have a Mega. I also think I have to show. Right here. So this is the same brand, Panini Prism, but this is a blaster. See, it's a little bit smaller, you get less cards, four per cards per pack, six pack per boxes, six pack per box. I ah, forget it, I can't speak today. <laughs> but you get the point. Um, and here, you're not guaranteed an, auto an autographed card. You're guaranteed one rookie memorabilia card. Uh, so a memorabilia card is usually a card that has some sort of a patch, some cut of their jersey in it, which I'll show you one of those in a few. Um, so you have, also I don't have any of them here, but they're called um, cellos, cello packs, or fat packs, which those are you might be more familiar with seeing, they're the actual individual packs of, excuse me, of the cards. Um, so you have those, those are your cheapest option. Then come hanger, hanger boxes. I don't think I have any hangers to show, um, but a hanger box is a little bit smaller. It's an actual box that looks just like a, um, a blaster, but it actually has like a little loop on it that can hang on a shelf. Um, so you'll go cello or fat packs, which are individual packs. Those are kind of around the same range, but those are the cheapest. Then you would have a hanger, blaster, mega. Then you would get, you would have what is called a hobby box. And the hobby boxes are generally the most expensive versions of, uh, of what you can get. Let's see. This is the mosaic hobby box. So as you can see, you're guaranteed two autographs, 10 packs per box, 15 cards per pack. So you're getting a ton of cards in a hobby box. These are very expensive. I purchased this particular one at $800. Um, and it was a heartbreak because I got absolutely nothing out of it. <laughs> but you can get some real expensive, real um, valuable cards out of your hobby boxes. If you have the money for it, that's definitely the, the area you wanna shoot for um, because you have a higher chance of hitting something worthwhile out of a hobby box. But if you're like the rest of us who don't have an absurd amount of money to just waste on the hobby, you're probably gonna be playing more in the range of these two, the blaster, which this, pr this prism blaster now, like I said, prices have skyrocketed. So you could buy this for, I believe it's about $80 and you could buy a um, Mega, I believe the Megas are about 200. So they're still very expensive, um, but it, it's a little bit more reasonable than buying a hobby box at 800, which that, I bought this hobby box, I bought this one over the summer. I bought this one over the summer and it was 800. Now, I can't, I mean, don't quote me, but I believe that you probably couldn't even buy this for under 800 now. It's probably more closer to like nine, 950. Um, so choose wisely as to how you want to spend your money. Um, if you're more on a budget, take your time with cello and fat packs. Buy those. Those are usually about 20 to $30 per pack. And they usually come with about 30 cards in, in a pack. Um, I would definitely go that route. If you have a little bit more money to spend and you want to really dive into the hobby and get some fun cards, definitely look into these, um, the Mega and the uh, Blaster Box. If you have a ton of money to spend, maybe you just got your income tax and you want to just jump straight into the hobby and you want to guarantee that you're getting something good, go ahead and get a hobby box. So now, you, those are the different types of boxes that you can be getting. What brand do you want? So like I said, the Mosaic is kind of the middle of the pack. Um, brand. The creme de la creme, what you want, which is kind of the cornerstone of cards, is actually right now for Football Panini Prism. Anything that's worth anything um, is going to be out of a Panini Prism box. So you got 
Let me see if I have it readily available. Well, actually, this one's pretty cool. So this one, this is your green pulser, I think it's called. I think it's the green pulser, Nick Boza. Not a rookie card, but it's his second year, which also has value. So you're looking for rookie cards. If you can't get the rookie card, second years also still hold value. Um, so this Nick Bosa card is actually pretty cool. You have, these all came out of actually this prism box. This is an autographed silver Kenyan Drake. Pretty cool. Um, so these hold a ton of value. These, I could probably sell this Kenyan Drake. I could probably sell this for like maybe 15 bucks just because he's not a super... Um, elite player it's not worth a ton um, but you know 15 bucks something whereas here this card is not doesn't look like much but mr. Joe Burrow base rookie card this is kind of what you this is what you're looking for you're looking for the quarterbacks the quarterbacks hold the most value and the best quarterbacks hold the absolute most value this card right here, I could probably put it on eBay and get anywhere from $80 to $110 for this card right here. So, and this is a base, so it's not even a variation like this Kenyan Drake. Imagine if you were able to get a auto Joe Burrow, a silver Joe Burrow, that ups the price of this card immensely. Um, so then after that, you got your receivers. Your receivers hold a ton of value and your running backs. Those are the cards that hold the most values. Quarterbacks are creme de la creme and your receivers and running backs, those are next up. So those were all Prism, which is what you want to look for. Then you have all different types. Uh, there's so many different brands. Um, so let me see, this brand, this one here specifically is a pretty, this one's a pretty cool card. Wish it was Pat Mahomes, but we'll take Frank Clark. This one is a Spectra. So that box runs a little bit higher. Um, like I said, I haven't bought resale in a while, so I'm not 100% sure as to what it would cost now, but I know before um, a box of Spectra would run you about 600. Comes with, I believe, 14 cards. So it's not a lot of cards, but each card is valuable. So this one's pretty cool. So you have an autograph, champions, Frank Clark card from Super Bowl uh, 30, 54, I'm sorry. Pretty cool. So now what makes this autograph, and see if I can show you the difference. These two autographs are not the same, believe it or not. So this autograph, let's see if I can show it to you. It's a sticker. Can you see that? It's uh, the autograph, so what that is, is this is a stickered auto. So the autograph goes onto a sticker. Kenyon Drake signed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stickers, and Panini takes that sticker and st slaps it on a card. So that this still holds value, but not as much as maybe this Frank Clark card, which is called an on-card auto. The on-card auto here, you can see it's actually physically on the card. So Frank Clark held this card autographed it himself makes this card a lot more valuable um, so definitely looking for that um, see if I can show you a couple other different brands this card I like a lot too okay so here's one I can get into so this is a Clyde Edwards Hilaire Phoenix rookie card really dope looking card Phoenix is a personal favorite of mine their cards just really like pop um, so this card is, so it's his rookie card, but if you turn to the back, see if I can get this to focus, there's a number right there, 25 of 75. So you also have numbered cards. Numbered cards add value to the card. So this is the 25th card out of 75. There's only 75 of these in the world. And this is number 25. So that it being numbered adds value to it. What also adds value in this card's particular case, it's number 25. What number does Mr. Clyde Edwards Hilaire wear? 25. So if the number of the card matches the number that the player wears, we call that in the industry a eBay one of one. It means it's a very rare card. It's the only of its kind because 
it's the only one that is numbered the same number as uh, his jersey number. So that's a cool card. Um, so if you're getting into the hobby, you're looking for quarterbacks like this here. This is Jacob Eason. I'm holding on to this card because it's a very beautiful card. Um, but also, before Carson Wentz got traded, um, Jacob Eason was looking like he could have been the next man up. So when you hunt for a card like Jacob Eason, it's almost like investing. You're, you're looking at a guy who you think might get the job in the future, so you're investing in his cards at a low price before he gets the job. So that way, when he does get the job, now he uh, the value of your cards that you've gathered jump together. Uh, so a guy who would have been good for that would have been someone like uh, Jalen Hurts, for example. I personally collected him. Um, some basketball cards. This, these are Optic. Ja Morant. This is a Kendrick Nunn card. Pretty cool. Um, so I, I think you understand the point. Um, two more things that I'm going to go over real quick. So you have this card here. This is called a patch. This is all. This is an, this is a um, a memorabilia card. I'm sorry, I lost the word. So you can see it has a cut of his jersey cut into it. Uh, it's a rookie card, Zach Moss. These have a ton of value. Uh, what is this one numbered out of? This one's numbered. Let's see if I can get that in the camera. Two of ten. So you want those, and then the last matter to talk about is graded cards. So this card, this is a Jaron Jackson Donruss rated rookie card. This card was sent out to PSA and was graded. Um, so you can see here, it comes in a nice little case, comes with a label, what the card is, what the player is, it's, it's rating. Generally from PSA, you want either a nine or a 10. Anything underneath that doesn't have a ton of value. Um, so if you find a perfect card, like for example, this John ja Morant, this card is pretty perfect. I'm gonna send this out to get it uh, get it graded. Hopefully it comes back a 10. Um, that's it, man. So these are all the different types of cards. This is kind of a quick hitter uh, just to get you guys introduced to the game. There's so much more that goes into it. Um, please hit us up on, on our, our Instagram, Cover32Show, if you have questions. We're definitely going to be trying to collab more with some other people to teach the game. Uh, we want to do some breaks, get cards in people's hands. Um, but until then, thank you guys for joining in for this episode, part three. And until then, we'll see you next time. Peace.